Hi folks, Fat Man Mark here. Here's the last uh, and third video in my little mini series about, uh, you know, so you want to try busking. Um, so this third and last video is about how to earn money, how to earn money busking. And it's not like you uh, you become a good player or whatever, singer or whatever. It's not like you become really good at your instrument or you're singing or whatever, and then you go out on the street and and everybody in the street is just goes, wow, he's incredible. And, opens up their, their wallets and purses and throws money in the tip jar. It works nothing like that. Now let me tell you something really interesting to set the tone for the reality of what it is. Uh, to a great extent, no matter how good you are as a musician or singer or whatever busking uh, type of performance you're offering, no matter, how, no matter how good you are doing what you are doing on the street, that is no guarantee of success by any means. Furthermore, no matter how good you are, a guitar player, a harmonica player, a singer, whatever it is, no matter how good you are at doing what you do on the street, it's very, very difficult to earn money. Very difficult to earn money, it gets worse. It's very difficult to uh, have people, uh, it's very difficult to earn money, it's very difficult to uh, capture people's attention, right? And it can be difficult for people to even notice you or or act like they've noticed you, okay? Let me give you an example of that. This very topic was, uh, you know, being thought about by I believe it was a, I believe it was the New York Times. It was, it was a news, uh, New York newspaper or a New York uh, television journalism show. It was something like that. But in New York, you know, apparently they had heard or knew that buskers, even folks that were really quite good, had a very difficult time earning money. So they wanted to see if it, they could prove or disprove this. So they, I think this was back in, what, the late 70s maybe or so. So what they did is they asked the uh, gentleman who at that time was considered the greatest violinist in the world. They asked him if he would uh, participate in this experiment that they were doing. And the experiment was, by the way, this is my new Fender t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so the experiment uh, that they asked him if he would uh, participate in was they wanted to see what would happen if they took the greatest violin player alive. Violinist. Excuse me. It's not a violin player. It's a violinist. Anyway, so they decided let's, let's take the, the greatest violinist in the world today. Let's put him in Penn Station in New York, the huge subway station. Huge. Thousands of people run through there every day. Thousands. Let's take the greatest violinist currently live in the world today. Let's put him in, in Penn Station in New York City. Let's give him a sign, you know, or something about asking for money for his playing. And then let's have him pose. Let's have him pose as a busker playing violin at Penn Station Subway, right? So again, people come into Penn Station to the subway area, going or coming on a subway. They hear music, they look over here, what they're seeing is the greatest violin player in the world, busking, right? He played for several hours, I think it was, and he, he earned almost nothing. Furthermore, most of the time, most people didn't even acknowledge his existence. All right, all right, so can you imagine that? So obviously this, this gentleman being the great, considered the greatest violin player alive in the world, you know, Obviously, he was extremely damn good. And the lesson from this is that being damn good doesn't mean squat on the street, basically. At least, I mean, it's it, 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 uh, it's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. It's not enough at all. Okay, so, and that's what this video is about, how to earn money, right? He was really, really, really good, the best in the world at the time. He couldn't earn any money. So here's what you got to do to avoid his problem all right so transitioning into what to do now when you play on the street no matter how good you are uh the first thing well first thing you're gonna you're gonna have to uh, uh first thing that you're gonna learn and that you're gonna have to learn to live with is that most people won't even notice you no matter how good you are how hard you're trying how much you're just pouring your heart and soul and guts into what you're doing you'll see the people walking by and you know Dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, and about 95% of them won't even 
show any kind of response that they even know you exist, that you're there performing, right? 95% approximately people won't show any evidence of noticing that you're performing. And you could be playing some crazy good stuff. Nothing. So that's a fact. You have to uh, realize that, learn, see that for yourself, accept that, and then learn to work with that or around that, if you will. Okay, so a general, uh, so, so there's that. Now we're going to move on to another little topic uh, of, of how to earn money. Okay, first thing is uh, location, location, location. Um, find the most popular place around, maybe a grocery store, maybe other shops. The best thing to do generally is, in my opinion, and from my experience of 12 years, is uh, here's an example. There's a Whole Foods grocery store in my area. Now I can, and there's not too much else around there. It's a little tiny shopping center. There's a Starbucks. There's a guitar center, a music store, as a matter of fact. There, uh, there's maybe about six or so little businesses in this little tiny plaza. And Whole Foods is the main business. Well, there's enough business there. It's not a real busy place, but there's enough business there. And it's the type of people. See, people who shop at Whole Foods, I'm generalizing here, but I'm generalizing in a complimentary way. People at Whole Foods tend to be open. Tend to, people who shop at Whole Foods more often than not, in my opinion and from my experience, tend to be you know more open-minded, maybe a little bit more into the arts, uh, and a little bit more well-heeled, quite frankly, than the perhaps everybody. Uh, it's really expensive to buy stuff at Whole Foods. I can't afford to shop there, uh, but folks do, and so they can if they do like what you're doing, and if you present yourself well and stuff like that, well, you're in a position to, to receive a nice tips, you know. And I get a tips of a five dollar bill, a ten dollar bill, a twenty dollar bill. All the time, including at Whole Foods, all the time. Um, so that's your location thing. You want a lot of traffic. You want a situation where you don't have to be too close to the door because they want you off to the side a little bit, right? If you're if you're just playing an acoustic instrument or nothing amplified, you can be fairly close to the door, but well away from the the pathways that people are taking to get in and out of the door. So be off to the side. Um, and uh, and I've got previous videos to talk about how to behave, you know, around, around a business where you're going to play. Uh, and then if you amplify it again, maybe go across the street, uh, so you're not too close, but people can still hear you because it, because you've got an amplifier, so they can still hear you. It also uh, allows you to uh, make room for other people, maybe panhandlers or something at the front door where you're not right in their face, and you're not directly competing with them side by side. You've moved away and across the street. So in order to reach you, to give you a donation. A tip: They have to pass the panhandler, and they have to pass the uh, the person, maybe uh, selling poetry or something, to come across the street to you to give you money. Uh, and that way, the people that you're competing with, if you are competing with others there, they know you're not trying to horn in on on their kind of action. You're all the way across the street, you know. So if people pass them and go all the way across the street to give you a tip. Well, there's nothing they can do about that, you know. That you're not right there, right across from them, you know kind of distracting people from from them earning money. The people walking past them and they have an opportunity to give them money if they don't, well they weren't going to give it to them anyway. And then they come across the street if they gave me some then nobody cares. Your, your competitors really don't care about that. Another thing I do on that same topic is if I earn money, I give a dollar or two or more to any and all others that are in the area busking or panhandling as I am. That's another part of that get having a good rapport with people. If I earn 20 bucks or 40 bucks or 60 bucks or 80 bucks I'll go to each of those persons and say hey how's it going man thanks for putting up with my noise you know and joking and I'll give them some money uh, and see they appreciate that they appreciate that for obvious reasons uh, you're respecting them you're thinking about them you're sharing with them a little something it's not even the money that you give them it shows you that you 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 know you care that they're there and you are respectful that they're there and you're trying to behave in a way that's uh, not uh, being going to be a negative to them. In fact, you're being nice and you're giving them a little couple bucks. It's a good way to go. Good way to go. It, it, it eliminates conflict and promotes goodwill amongst all the buskers or whatever. Uh, other locations can be uh, now. There's a lot of places where you can't do it. Like certain uh, certain businesses, uh, you can't step onto their property, private property. Some businesses, the sidewalk in front of the business or along business is private property, and you can't do that unless you, it's okay with them. Um, uh, but uh, generally, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so just, uh, uh, yeah, so, you, so you, if it's a public sidewalk, 
then you can be there, okay? And that's the best way to go. And again, just follow all the good rules of good manners. Um, so look for, uh, anyway, the best thing is to find a little area. Like in Seattle, there's a, an area called the University District, a district. And it's a whole, it's a, what is it? It's a very long uh, ro uh, road, a street. It's a very long street. It runs north and south with, with businesses up and down both sides of it for many, 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 many blocks. Okay, and that when, the, when, when COVID isn't going on, uh, the University of Washington is very nearby. So you've got these thousands of University of Washington students regularly going up and down. It's called the Ave, going up and down the Ave in Seattle, uh, where there are all these businesses up and down the street for a long, 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 long ways, both directions. So you can set up just about anywhere on that Ave, particularly on a weekend, including a weekend evening or night, and there's hundreds and even thousands of people are going to pass you. So if what you're doing is good and they like it, you can earn a lot of money. I've earned up to $150 a day at the very location that I'm describing now. Um, so find your location. And the nice thing about the Ave and the University District is it's all public sidewalks. So you're not on private property. Um, so find something like that. The best place, again, is a, you know, a district or something where there's a bunch of stores and shops and restaurants and stuff like that with public sidewalks and set up there because... And especially some of this popular evenings and weekends and stuff, people strolling back and forth. Find a place like that because you've got all kinds of businesses there and you've got all kinds of people. That's your best bet. You know, the more traffic you got, the better chance you're going to earn something, the more you're going to earn. And then the second best option, if you can't find something like I was just talking about, would be like a single store, but the right type, like Whole Foods, for example. Okay, so in your own area, you can drive around and scout before you do your first busking. You can drive around and scout and look and see what the best places appear to be, you know. Uh, okay, so that's location. Okay, the next thing is, and this is really, really important. Uh, no matter how good you are at what you're doing on the street, busking, you have to ask for tips, for, for gratuities, for donations. You have to ask for them. Doesn't matter how good doesn't matter how good you are, you have to ask for them. You can be playing along and just, you know, really playing well and somebody comes up to you and they're responding and they're telling you, how, you know, that they really, really, really think you're just really a great player and you know, really, really love what you're doing and, and uh, you know, they can just really genuinely really like what you're doing and respect what you're doing and really enjoy what you're doing and walk away without throwing so much as five cents in your, in your tip jar, you know. And it's not that they are selfish or anything like that. It's just they don't really think about it. They, you know, they see the sign probably that says, you know, my personal thing is I have a sign that says uh, "Spare a coin for the music?" question mark. So I just have that. It's subtle, right? Anyway, so a lot of times they don't see the sign or notice it. They're just bit too busy talking to you about your playing and that they like it, and you have a nice conversation. and And that's one of the great things about busking is those conversations. But but they won't give you any money. So you're out there to try to earn money. At least I am a part of it. You know, I need the extra income. I live on social security. So. If you want to earn money busking, busking you got to ask for it. So I recommend making a sign that says something like I just said, a spare a coin for the music question mark, or something like that. I wouldn't have a sign that says down on my luck or anything like that. Just have it be positive. Say, hey, just kind of remind them gently that you're out there playing and playing hard. And if they're enjoying what you're doing, maybe they can throw you a little something, you know, as a sign, a little small token of their appreciation, right? It just kind of puts the thought in their mind, you know, and then at least they'll think about it and they'll either do it or they won't. Um, but I found that that is very, very, very effective, having that sign, seriously. Um, okay, now here's another one. Uh, so you have to ask for tips, but not verbally, with a sign, with a subtle sign, okay. Uh, okay, here's the next thing now. This might sound kind of cheesy and kind of deceptive and stuff like that, but it's what you need to do to be successful. And again, it's like the human nature of they come up and rant and rave about how good of a player you are and they see that you've got nothing in your tip jar and they see you have a sign requesting tips and they don't put anything in your tip and then they leave driving you know, a Rolls Royce, let's say. It's just a human nature thing. It's just a human nature thing. So what you need to do on the street as a busker and when you're trying to earn money is you need to counter that human nature uh, tendency to not throw money in your tip jar just because they just don't think of it. Because it hasn't hasn't been brought, you know, forward to the forefront of their attention while you're playing. So here's what you want to do. So you got a tip jar or a bowl or a hat or a dish, whatever it is. Now, some folks they will just go ahead and let whatever they earn accumulate—paper money, coins, whatever they accumulate—they'll just let uh, whatever they uh, earn 
they'll just let it accumulate in their dish, you know, as they go along. And then when they're finished, they gather up all their money and pack up and, and leave. Okay, well, that's not a good idea for two reasons. One, it's a great way to have your money stolen. It's too tempting. You've got a bowl full of money there. You're playing on the street. There's a lot of folks on the street today that are desperate, homeless, no money, no food, nothing. Um, there's a lot of desperation out there. So you got a bowl full of money sitting there. You're just, you're just asking for and making it too tempting for someone to come running along. And they'll come walking along as if everything is fine and maybe act like they're going to throw something in your tip jar. But instead, they're going to grab your tip jar and run away. So you, that's, it's just not a good, it's not smart to let your money accumulate in your tip jar. Uh, it's not smart because of uh, theft risk. It's also uh, not smart because if you want if you want and need in my case to earn maximum money from your very very hard, honest uh, and uh, uh, what uh, soulful you know uh, work that you've done on the street to play music or whatever for people, um, you need to maximize your income. So here's what you do. Another reason you don't let the money accumulate. If you start accumulating money in your tip jar, even a little bit. Again, human nature, they don't really think about it. I don't think it just it just happens. The human nature is to come up, you're playing, they love it, they look down, and you see you have money in there. They think, well, he doesn't need my money. You know, he's he's got some money in there. He doesn't need my money. They don't actually stop and think about that. It's just that's just a glance and their mind automatically goes, I just got money. Okay? So what you have to do is as you go along, this is what I do, as you go along, anytime anybody drops any paper money in my in my uh, tip jar, my tip bowl, I immediately grab it and put it in my pocket. I don't leave anything but about a dollar's worth of change in my tip bowl. That's it. Again, anything over like a dollar and change that I earn in tips in the tip uh, bowl, I grab it and put it in my pocket. That way when people come up, they see the sign, they see you only have about a dollar and change, they figure this guy needs even just a dollar for me. Even if I just give this guy a dollar, this guy could use it. He's asking for money, politely. He's got virtually nothing in his guitar case. He's playing his heart out. I'm gonna throw a tip in there, okay? If I, again, if I if they had seen a bowl full full of money, they wouldn't have had that thought process. So, and I do need the money. I, I'm old. I live on Social Security. I live in a car, quite frankly. And uh, so yeah, so so don't keep the money in the jar. Pull it out immediately to avoid a theft or temptation of theft, and pull it out immediately at, to avoid people thinking that that you to avoid people just not registering in their mind that you could really use a tip if they like what you did, you know, and if they want to tip you. So that's an important tip. Uh, and then another thing is just uh, just be really nice and really personable and with people and stuff like that, even if they don't give you a tip, even if they stand there for an hour and listen to you play and don't throw so much as a penny in there and they drive away in a Rolls Royce, be nice. You're out there to perform. It's a privilege for them to even listen to your music the way I see it. And don't get mad when nobody at all seems to be noticing. Just remember the famous violin player. Uh, and another thing is, if you're out there playing, and you notice somebody stop to listen, when that happens, I believe it's it's uh, I believe it's effective, and I believe it's 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 a good thing to do. I think it's what a good performer does. That you play for them, right? You're playing along. Nobody's noticing. Next thing you know, a mother and child come up and they stop in front of you and they're listening. Well, now you're not just going to keep playing, you're going to play for them, you're going to make some eye contact, you know, uh, you know, you, you involve them, just like any good performer does, they connect with the audience, so you're going to make some eye contact from time to time, and, and they know that what you're doing, you're going to be playing and look at them, they know you're playing for them, that's what, anyway, I think that's uh, a good thing to do as a busker, to perform, uh, for, to perform, number one, don't just play, perform for whoever's standing there, uh, giving the, you the honor of, of listening to your music, whether it's one person or 100 people. Give it everything, everything you've got and, and play for them. Um, that's it. That's it. That's how you make money. Um, see if there's anything else. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, and uh, it's one of the most rewarding things ever. I love playing on the street. I can make really good money at it pre-COVID and hopefully post-COVID. I can make really, really good money, average eighty dollars a day. Often make over a hundred dollars a day, even up to one hundred and twenty, thirty, forty, fifty dollars a day. Now this was a few years ago pre-COVID, uh, and I only just started busking on the street again recently. 
couple years ago. And of course, I'm not making any, anywhere near that kind of money. But once the University of Washington is back up and going, and I go play on the AV again, as I described, I can make a fair amount of money. Um, and I need that to survive. So anyway, so uh, I've developed these through trial and error and experience. I've developed these here little tips to to make the most to earn, to honestly uh, you know and uh, earnestly earn the most money that I can from my busking. And so I'm sharing these with you so that you can do the same. Okay, this is Stratman Mark signing off. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.